What's happening, guys? Uh, I hope you had a wonderful day today. We had a lot of good action. We were prepared for a lot of the stuff that happened, which um, always makes it easier. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff on scan last night, MNK, TEVA, ENDP, all those trades panned out uh, relatively perfectly. Um, Fran, we woke up, we had a major trade uh, on that one today. I probably could have traded it uh, around the core a little bit better. And of course, just like I said at the close when I when I sold out, I said it's probably gonna go 20% 20, 20 after hours. But you know what, there, you can always look at both sides of that. And I was kind of playing for a potential AKTX situation, which I'll, I'll go over um, uh, in a little bit. But, you know, assuming that it's gonna squeeze out and then slam back down. Um, but, you know, kind of reviewing the trade and, and, and thinking about it, um, retailers were hot today, and these low float type uh, names, not necessarily super low float, but uh, Pier 1 Imports, PIR, uh, RAD, a lot of these big companies that have had reverse splits, including uh, Blue Apron, for example, APRN is also coming back. So these are all names that went way down to pennies and then end up rebounding. And, you know, a lot of people look at it and they look at 6 to 12 as like a you know, a, a huge move and wow, it's up, you know, two bucks a share, four bucks a share. It's got to be a short. It's got to pull back. But if you looked at it in a situation where it is moving from 30 cents to 60 cents, it's not so much of a no brainer. And that's kind of the situation that you were actually in because the stock was 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents. I forget what uh, Fran was pre, uh, pre split, but whatever the case, uh, it ended up reverse splitting, and it went to about a two million, two point. I think it was a little bit over two, maybe two, two six, two seven. I forget. Uh, million float. What was interesting is both uh, Yahoo Finance and Finvis said that it had a, a, over a million uh, of the shares short. So it carried about a 40, 45 percent uh, short float, which is a, a very abnormally high number, especially on a low floater. Um, you know, we've seen that on Overstock, OSDK, and LCI, these really, really high um, short interest names, but those don't have one, two, three million share floats. So right away, I knew that that was going to be a contender. It was just about keeping a solid average, not getting too, um, too aggressive or too biased because I was pretty biased right away. I really thought that it could be uh, the one today. And I posted a lot of commentary throughout the day on the key levels for it and the key trap areas and what the tape was suggesting. And I really thought there was going to be a, a monster squeeze later on, as I said, around 10, 11, 12 uh, in, the, um, in the afternoon, 10 in the morning, 12 in the afternoon. Um, so uh, really great opportunities there. A lot of the move happened after hours, great squeeze. But uh, let's take a look at, uh, so last night's scan, and uh, I'm, I'm not always going to put these on, on YouTube as well. Uh, I got a lot of positive feedback, so I just wanted to kind of showcase what um, we do at Investors Underground uh, as far as the um, scans each night, kind of getting a feel for um, you know what, what and how we prepare for things, uh, as well as um, sort of the trade recap and the actual trades being taken and things like that. So um, at any rate, uh, just going through like last night, uh, what I do is I have a, a list of 5 to 10, 12 names, which you usually see um, on Sunday night, the free scan that we do. Uh, and then in the morning, I take a look at what actually is setting up and what has volume, what's doing what I thought. Um, is there any news out? Like for example, and an MNK this morning had sold a unit and uh, there was a little bit of uh, action there. So to me, that triggers the TIVA idea, the ENDP idea, and not necessarily that they had news or that they should move with it, but they all kind of have been moving as if they're in a same basket, right? So uh, MNK, MNK started to take off and so I immediately look for the other ones as well. If they start to go, you might have a little bit of edge. You might have a little bit more time to get in those uh, while they start to kind of catch up to the other. Um, if you notice when MNK had the news about whether it was restructuring or hiring advisors, whatever it was, and so everybody immediately went to, it's going to zero, it's going bankrupt, and then they came out and said, no, that's not really the case. Um, if you notice everything, ENDP and Tiva included, everything got hit after hours. 
So it was a good opportunity for shorts to, uh, algo shorts, whatever you want to call it, uh, quickly hammer in. But then at the same time, you know, before they kind of responded, every pop from that point forward is now an opportunity because, you know, they're probably all going to zero, right? And then here we are a couple days later and shorts are bent and we're squeezing out to um, new highs or at least recent new highs, not new highs at all, uh, considering how much they pulled back. So um, anyway, so last night, ACAD, uh, which worked out pretty well, um, ACAD goal was basically a week open uh, potential, you know, either week open or gap up off the open and then reactively trade from there. Uh, typically, I want to see it um, consolidate 9.45, 10 a.m. plus, and if you take a look at, you know, the action, you'll see that it was a much cleaner trend after 9.45. So this is about 9.45, and a lot of times, you know, you can definitely trade off the open, but, you know, on, on AMD type situations and, and sometimes like these, you know, it's it, it becomes hit or miss if you do it all the time. Um, you might nail it a bunch of times, but uh, if there isn't really a big edge, meaning it's going really, really, really hard into the open and then a parabolics at the open, or if it's weak, 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 weak and flushes out, um, those are the only times I really feel like there's an edge to react to. If you're just kind of trying to anticipate what way it's going to go, um, although I would say I'm decent at doing that, it only takes that one to, you know, you have the confidence on that one. And then it swipes you out, and you're you're back to flat across you know five different names that you took off the open. So, uh, point being is let it chill out a little bit. Let the trade kind of come in, consolidate, and you can see that here. Um, you know, we started to kind of uh, set up here, and I've talked a lot about this, where you can let it come back up, retest, and and basically retest and confirm versus VWAP. Let it let it rip up. It's not a chase. Let it kind of come back and then start to prove that it wants to come higher. And that's exactly what this one did, a pretty clean move throughout the day. Um, then we had uh, pays, I didn't touch that one today. CRK, this was a, a, a basically a natural gas play. Unfortunately, UGAS was also a, a playoff scan, um, but I was looking for the pullback, just like Nugget and the uh, silver trade last week. And so this one's probably gonna pull back with it. Um, and this was one that uh, definitely had a nice little Yank today came right out of the open. Again, do you really have an edge there? Probably not. So why not just let it kind of do its thing and then look for it to start to get heavy and break down later on? So in my opinion, you know, the, the patience type trade or the, the better trade is probably later on in the day. Um, but again, prep, prepared for it, etc. ARA, I'll fly through these. MBOT had a gap down. Um, Might have been news related. I didn't even look at it because I was looking for potential breakout towards 8 or 8.50. If it held 7.50s, it was already under 7.50, so it's off radar. Um, cool, I figured not much volume and probably backside move when everybody else is looking at other things. But really the key is uh, Tiva. Tiva was the plan that I had for today. If we had a little bit of a week open, I want to get long and I want 8 to 8.50 type move. Similar, ENDP, MNK, etc. cetera. Uh, and then MNK, same thing. Uh, I was anticipating that there was likely gonna be a gapper. Uh, yesterday, as I tweeted, uh, I was thinking probably 230, 240s range of a gapper, um, and then we could probably go to three. I was wrong, it went to four. Um, so, I mean, this one was huge, uh, great volume, great opportunity. Uh, I think that, like I said, a lot of shorts got on the wrong side, you know, on, in the 140s, 150s, 180s, 2s, etc. We haven't seen this thing bounce for a long, long, long time. And so it's just a, a really a caught the shorts off guard type of situation. We could easily squeeze out uh, the volumes there, great momentum, and uh, obviously the higher the better. So that one and EMDP, uh, same kind of ideas. MIK. Every day that this doesn't pull back, it gets a better and better look by me um, the following day. So higher the better, nothing to step in front of, but the most important part is the volume. I love stuff that has 5, 10, 15, 20 million, or in this case with MNK, 60 million, right? Um, because you don't have to deal with this one newsletter that's you know alert, uh, an entry in their, in their chat room, and then all of a sudden it takes off. Um, you don't have to deal with that. You don't have to 
kind of have your ears and eyes all over the place to kind of find out why something moved. Um, and was it natural or was it, you know, a manufactured breakout by a newsletter? Um, but anyway, go through the rest of the scan. You guys can uh, check it out. But each day that a trade does not uh, work, I always look and, you know, it's possibility for the next day. Uh, work, the idea today was weak open and, and rally back. So I always try to hit different... Um, different types of trades for all different types of people. The $2 range, the $20 range, even sometimes the $100 range. But uh, Josh Cherniak does a lot of those, uh, you know, the Roku types, the shop types, uh, the much higher end uh, names. And uh, so he usually does a pretty good job covering that. So I don't really bother too much on that. So let's get into uh, today's action. So uh, like I said, my, my goal was MNK and Tiva off week opens and uh, ideally trend join. Ideally take the uh, move for, you know, at least a good part of it, I was hoping. And um, so I did a fairly good job, but uh, I didn't really size into Tiva as much as I would have liked to, um, and especially not MNK. And MNK was obviously the leader. The one that I sized into was ENDP, um, and I was pretty confident about that when I've been talking about that being my, my choice uh, to trade the last couple days in the, in the room and that when it did break that 350 mark uh, that I really thought it was going to take that next leg up because that was the prior top. We always want to look left. We always talk about looking left to kind of anticipate that right and uh, so that's really where the, the volume started to come in. So let's look at these, uh, these three right away. So uh, Tiva, you can see it started to ramp up, right? So I wanted a week open. We got that. It started to rip up and uh, Josh actually in the that is stands right over there. Um, you know he actually said I'm I'm long Tiva, and uh, I would I didn't even have it on radar. I was watching uh, ENDP and uh, and uh, MNK, and he said he was long, and I was like, you know what, I like it. I'm joining you, and uh, it was a great idea. And it's you know that that's kind of what the chat room and the same thing with this office that's that's kind of the the vibe the idea is not necessarily to follow each other's coattails but just throw out ideas and you know what if i didn't if i didn't hear that i would have missed the trade and with that it triggered in my head time to make sure that we're watching endp and um mnk because if tiva's going means the other basket names are probably going too so at any rate i got a, i got in there um i got long some over here into the into the rips I uh, sold a little bit around the core, started to scale in, and uh, I just wanted to be safe with the trade. Wanted to be safe and not, you know, to get too aggressive. There was a point in time where I got fully out right here, and I dabbled back in, just small, and, you know, although the trade would have been right, I didn't want to get in a situation where I was just kind of buying a buy. So I had a little bit of FOMO because I had sold here. It was still looking like it was going to ramp up, so I went ahead and moved on. So the trade came back, retested VWAP started to grind and I went ahead and scaled back in and made it a good portion of the way back up there and for the most part I got most of the move today so I was really happy about that I wasn't trying to go in and out in and out in and out I'm really focusing on letting these things work because right now we're in a very big trend joining style market we're not in a you don't need to to scout back and forth back and forth you're gonna be you know super tired by the end of the day and you know <laughs> probably start to hate trading at that point the, the key is to really look for the, the big picture moves and try to get the meat of the move, not the, the little micro um, moves. So that was uh, the, the big trade there uh, on uh, Tiva, which was prepared for from scan. Again, the goal was a week open for ideally an 8 to 8.50 move. So, you know, I could still see this having some nice fireworks, uh, you know, up towards the nines potentially. We'll see what happens, but again, it's going to have to set up, and, and if, I, if I see that trade set up, then I'll take it. Um, and uh, then MNK. MNK, I was late to this trade, but um, I bought some, and then I bought a little bit more, and I was like, eh, maybe I bought a little bit too much. Nope, I was right, and uh, I went ahead and re-added around the core, and you can see that uh, I didn't make it very far on this one. I, I felt like I had a little bit of... Um, of a, uh, a, a bad average, uh, I was a little bit uh, emotionally attached to the price just because I didn't I didn't get in there right away, 
and I, I felt a little uncomfortable based on how many I had taken. Uh, and because of that, as you can see, I went ahead and, and uh, moved on quickly. So this is a situation where, well, had I taken less, would I have made it you know, further? And the answer is probably, and it's a good way for you guys to consider whether or not, you know, are you trying to do too much? And if so, you know, some of those guys, some of the guys in the room that send me charts and there's like a, an entry and then an exit, entry, exit, entry, ex they're already thinking about how they're going to exit as soon as they enter. And they barely make a candle. And I think that uh, that all comes down to size. And uh, so anyway, I sized in a little bit too much for uh, what I felt comfortable with. And so at any rate, uh, I didn't make it very far on that. So anyway, later on in the day, um, I, I wanted to kind of test. I felt like it was going to pull back. And my goal was uh, basically just to pull back into 2, two to 3 p.m. And so I started to get there and offer. So these are all just very little dabbles, very little dabbles. And the way that I do that is I kind of put some feelers out there couple hundred shares here and there um, just to see how fast I get swiped off the offer right if, if I'm putting it up on the offer and I just keep on getting taken out taken out taken out taken out then that tells me that there's a still strong buyer there's still people that are coming for those offers but if I start putting it on the offer and it's taken out forever you know I'm not talking just any offer I'm just talking as it comes into breakout uh, spots if it fails to get me fails to get me fails to get me that starts to tell me, all right, you know, now there's competition on the offers. So that's when I start to go ahead and get a little bit more aggressive because I know if there's other competition on the offers, one, there's a good chance that a seller might be coming in, and then two, if, if they don't, then there's a good chance that I can go ahead and cover um, to those offers. And so at any rate, I started to size in after this failed to uh, follow through, but uh, I, I didn't want to get too top heavy. So anytime that I'm dabbling in on the front side, I want to make sure that I'm also covering. And that also can give you a little bit of clarity on um, how those covers are in the same manner that the offers give you, right? So if I am dabbling in on the offers and I start to scale in and I put some bids out there just to see if I get swiped down right away or if you know they come to me, they, they test you know my, my bids, and uh, and then move away. So sometimes, if you if you look, you'll actually only get hit for you know sometimes one share, a couple shares. Um, sometimes you get hit for a whole block. If you keep on putting up a block and it and it keeps on refreshing, refreshing, there's a good chance that it's going to go lower. So um, at any rate, I was starting to get partial fills, partial fills, and then it just kind of um, slammed down. So I just kept on putting it out there, 361 and uh, 362 and and I got a bunch of fills, and I think I just bailed on the rest uh, into the 350s or 365s anyway. So um, I didn't like how it was acting, and I thought that it was going to be 355, 350s by that point, and it wasn't. So rather than try to be a hero and try to find the top, I moved on. So that was that one. Again, not a not a huge trade by any means there. ENDP was the good one for me, and you can see I got long there, 315s or so. Yeah, 315s, 330s. I just kept on adding, 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 and um, I, uh, I add, 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 and then I ended up uh, selling about a third of it up in this area over here. Um, and then I think I went down to about a half size or so um, over here, and then uh, I went ahead and ditched uh, the, the rest. Um, so overall, fantastic trade. This, you can see, I, was, I think I was actually all the way out at this point right here. Uh, and then I joined the trend again over here um, and uh, made it made it up to the, the highs. I made the same trade as I made on MNK right over here. So I was shorting into the um, into the fours, four oh fives, and I was getting like partial fills here and there. Um, and and then I ended up just covering the whole the whole bucket down here into the um, into the uh, three nine sixers or so. Um, it, it would have come back down a little bit more, but again, it just it wasn't wasn't doing as I had planned. Um, so the last two that I want to go over, I think, um, was Fran and what was the other one today? Oh, CANF. CNF is a pretty good one to to show you. Anybody that's watched the YouTube of uh, kind of looking left to predict the right. 
um, or even if you looked at the failed breakouts. Um, this is a perfect example of that exact concept. So again, um, you know, ignore this little thing. I put on a little feeler just to kind of be there to remember uh, because a lot of times I lose them off of radar. So um, what I wanted to do and what my game plan was, was look left to predict the right, right? So you should assume at any point in time, any time that you're starting into this on the way up, you should assume that it's going to want to at least retest towards this level. And so I waited and waited and waited and I put on a little bit and then it started to come back in and I added a little bit more down here into the 309s. I did not size until 315s confirmed. So what I wrote in the room is, you know, at, at this point, I'm going to start to scale short if 315s fail. And it's, it failed a few times, so I went ahead and started to short into that and uh, ended up covering, um, covering some, re-adding, and then made it down to about 270s or so. So again, not a, not a huge trade. It was actually a relatively tough borrow. I was kind of late to the borrow on that one, so I didn't borrow too many. Um, but, uh, you know, that was that. Last but not least, Fran. Uh, Fran was the trade of the day for me. Uh, ENDP was a close second, but uh, Fran was the, the trade of the day. And um, I could have done a better job of trading around the core, but I had such a cheap and good average um, and, and enough size that I was like, you know what, I'm just going to let this thing work. Because I know that if I start to get a little top heavy, if I start to scale in, if I start to get confident, you know what, I'd be the one selling down here, down here or down here. So I had a really, really good read on it. I was watching the tape all day. Uh, I saw the traps. I saw how you know they, they were um, basically flushing it out. There was not really any volume. I mentioned uh, a couple spots on Twitter um, that I can link. Um, you guys can go back and, and review it, but I posted it uh, maybe like, uh, I don't know, 5 p.m., 5.30 p.m., something like that. But uh, the, the tell for me was uh, into these washouts here and how it reacted. Uh, there was never any big stuff. There was never any big move that just said, that's it. You know, it rips up and, it, and it, you go into these offers that just don't budge, right? So a lot of people ask me what a stuff move is and uh, hidden sellers, things like that. Um, and so basically, if you're thinking about this breakout here and it comes up and it's about to break out, all of a sudden it goes and it just, you know, kind of hits that wall. And you see all this volume go off, but it doesn't budge. It doesn't budge at all. That would be a stuff move. So at any rate, um, none of that happened today. There was never really any stuffs. And every time it flushed out, number one, it should have died, right? So we talk a lot about, um, you know, how many times should it have died? Should have probably cracked here, should have cracked over here, should have cracked over here, but yet it kept on coming back. So the key and the, the, the risk is though, we're, we're really close to VWAP, right? So you should always assume that it's gonna fail uh, at uh, VWAP. I had a couple people ask me throughout the day, like, hey, are you going to add into the, the winner over there? The answer is no, because the only way that I would add it was actually over 11. 1075 or 1076, I think, was the high at the time. But I want to know that we are in short squeeze mode. And I don't want to be anticipating the squeeze, because when you anticipate the squeeze, you become part of, the, part, of the, part of that candle that comes back down, right? Because you ruin your average, and then when it flushes, you freak out and you know, you head for the exits. So um, overall, really, really nice opportunities. I thought that this was gonna do like an AKTX style move. So that's what I was prepared for. I said it midday. And what I meant by that, and I said I'd go over that at the beginning of this. So if you go back to the AKTX, not the first move, but the, or not the second move, but the first move. I was prepared for this action right here. You can almost see that it was the same exact move, right? At the morning move, comes back, and it's just kind of toying with shorts all day, but it's holding trend. Yes, it's under VWAP, but it's holding trend. Tries to get everybody, you know, thinking it's going to break down, all of a sudden squeezes out, and then fries them. Fries everybody out, and then that's it. That's the move, right? And then from that point forward, I think the next day they did a S1A or something. I, I don't remember what it was, but um, obviously it's under two bucks now. Uh, so, with that said, that's what I was thinking was going to happen with Fran today. So, we got that nice little move, started a rip, and then I thought this was that move, 
at 15.55 or so, at basically five minutes to that bell. So that was my exit. I didn't want to be in a situation where, just like OPGN, if you guys remember, I think it was 16.39 or whatever it was, 15.39. I don't remember exactly, but you had that big rip, slam, downside haul. And I had some left in that. So right over here, take a look at this one, right? So I actually sold over here. No, I was wrong. It wasn't uh, 16s. <laughs> 12, 1267. So the 1260, as I had sold some, I sold about half of my size. But then it slammed right back down. So that was a kind of annoying one. You know, yes, I had a good average. Yes, it, you know, it was a, a good trade overall. But this action here was in my head with Fran, and I didn't want that same situation. So that's why I sold into this ramp. And you know, I, I thought you know we might just slam right back down. And had it happened, I would have been happy that I was out. So the fact that it didn't, yeah, it's annoying. And I even said that in the room. I was like, guaranteed 20% after hours after I sell. It happens. It's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen the next day. It's going to happen on every single stock. So there is no shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, you know, whenever I say that, it's it's never you know in a serious manner. I, I it's. You can't play that game because you could always, you could have always done better. You could have always done something. But had this gone to nine, we wouldn't be having this conversation about how I could have, you know, made it up to twelve or whatever. So, it is what it is. Um, and uh, you know, the tell here was that there was the the huge short flow, almost 40, 45 percent. They were lending out shares like crazy. Uh, it was easy to borrow at the majority of firms, or at least easy to get access to. They had good numbers, and the fact. That Coupled with all of that, with the short float, with how much was out there, uh, Interactive Brokers had a bunch of uh, shares. They were already out by pre-market. So you know everybody's on the wrong side. And then secondly, PIR, P-I-R, R-A-D, all these different uh, retail type names are just cruising. And um, that was kind of really the, the thesis behind this. And because I had gotten a good, good chunk down here, I wanted to be, you know, super, super cautious with ads. I just did little dabble ads here and there, but I never ruined my average, and I ended up, you know, unfortunately <laughs> canning it all down uh, at uh, I think it was 10, 1003 and 10, 10, 10 something. So, you know, whatever. Good trade. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and uh, if you have any questions, as usual, reach out. Thank you guys for the feedback, and uh, have a great night.